Welcome to the fourth lesson in Web Automation with Leapwork. In this lesson, we will focus on setting values in a form and how to work with the different types of fields and controls on a web page. We will use a page that is familiar to most people and that serves as a good example for a web form, the Facebook registration page. We start with a start web browser block with facebook.com specified as the URL. On the registration form, we will start by adding a value in the first name field using a type web text block. Capturing the first name and adding a value. Pretty simple and it works for all kinds of text fields. We will do the same with the last name field. For the password field, we can do it a bit different. Again, we use a type web text and capture the field. But instead of hard coding the value, we can use a generate password block to give us a random text value. Expanding the generate password block reveals a few parameters to configure the random password. The next field is the birthday, which is a combination of three drop down fields. We will use the set web drop down, and then we have a few options for setting the value. If we look at a drop down field, it is specified in a select tag on a web page with a number of option tags inside the select tag. We can select a value in three different ways, either selected by the value property, in this case, one, two, three, or selected by the text shown for the different options, in this case, January, February, etc. The last way is to set it by the individual elements index in the list, one, two, three. We will set it by the text that we can see, so we set the action property to set by text and insert the value October for the month. We do the same with the day and the year. We now have one field type left in the form, the radio button. This field type is handled the same way as we would handle a checkbox. Simply use a click web element and select the right option. So add a click web element and capture the right option, in this case, female. Let's try to run the flow from the first building block setting a value. We can see all the values inserted into the form. But what if we want to read the data from an external data source, like a database? How do we do this for these controls? Well, let's start by adding a database block and add in the necessary query.
I have a local connection defined to my SQL server. And then I'm going to insert a query that will select all customer data from the customer's table. When I click refresh, it will execute the query and reveal all the columns returned from the query as blue properties. We'll start by connecting the text fields. Usually pretty easy. First name to the first name block, last name to the last name block. We will keep the password block. We still want the random generated password for each run of this flow. For the birthday, we need to extract the year, month, and day from the date in the database in order to use them as input in the three set web dropdown blocks. We can use a set date to handle this. We add the birth date field as input to the block, and by expanding the date time, we get access to the individual values of the birth date. The month in the database is not specified as the name of the month, but as the number of months. So we need to change the action from set by text to set by value instead, just like this. And then we can connect the month to the value for the dropdown handling the month field. We can connect the day to the value for the dropdown for the day. And then we connect the year to the value for the set work dropdown that handles the year. The gender returned from the database is a number, one for females and two for males. This is a bit more complicated to handle, and we need to go into the strategy editor to handle this. When we look at the strategies for the captured radio button, we can see that strategy number two includes the actual value set in the radio button. One for females and two for males, matching the data coming from the database perfectly. Instead of the value, we insert a dynamic field and click Save. Then we connect the gender to the click web element block, which is the last field in the form. Let's try to run the flow with the data from the database. As we can see, all the fields were set using data from the database not using the hard-coded values from the previous run. The last little detail would be to transform the form part of the flow into a reusable subflow. I select all the blocks that set the values, right-click, and select the Create Subflow. I name it Facebook Registration Form, and click Save. To make it easier to use, I open the subflow and rename the input parameters. I rename the first one to first name, the second one to last name, the third one to gender, and the last one to birth date. Like this, and save the subflow. Looking at the flow now, it's simple and easy to overview, a good example of a subflow. In this lesson, we looked at some examples of how to set values in a web form. We looked at simple text fields, drop downs, and radio buttons, and saw how we can use the database block to drive all the values dynamically into a web form. At the end, we created a subflow handling all form interactions making the flow simple and easy to overview. Thank you.